Okay, so now, uh, video diary, I think this is the third video, um, and I'm explaining about my heart issues, so watch video two and one, if, if you haven't yet, but what I have is uh, mitral valve regurgitation, severe regurgitation, um, so I'm explaining where I am now. Um, my, I was getting, even though I was on all to slow my pulse, um, my doctor, um, my cardiologist told me to, to go, I'm going back every six months or whatever and call him if anything changes as far as my symptoms. So my symptoms were getting worse. I was getting more out of breath even though he had me on the Natadol. Um, and I wanted to basically go back to see if my regurgitation was any worse. So he did another echocardiogram um, on May. 13th of 2016 and I'm going to show the, the picture again um, so I explained in my last video I, the heart pumps, I have blood going into the left ventricle and then it pushes and goes here and because um, of my regurgitation when the heart pumps again some goes forward but I'm having more go backwards my heart was overworking so he put me on Natadol um, to to make it not overwork. So even on the nat at all, now my heart's starting to um, beat faster again, and I have even more regurgitation uh, going backwards, and it's going into my pulmonary vein, making me short of breath. So now the amount of blood going backwards, regurgitating, is at the severe stage. Um, so he found this in the echocardiogram. And I have my results here. I'm just going to uh, explain what what the results are and, and what's going on um, compared to my echo in 2013. So now my where my mitral valve was mild to moderate, now it's moderate to severe. Um, my pulmonary systolic pressure which is the, the blood pressure in this valve, um, the, the blood going back into my lungs. It was, it was 29, which is a little elevated, but not bad. And now it's 33. Um, so my, my pulmonary blood pressure is going up and especially with activity, um, and so that's why I'm having the shortness of breath. And I say shortness of breath, what, what was occurring was um, I would get short of breath going up the stairs. Um, it was just carrying my gear on a beach, working, exerting myself, running, um, and my heart overworking during exercise, but now it's at rest. I'm finding I get on the third step going up a, a flight of stairs and I'm I'm winded. Um, I feel my heart racing and I, I feel like I can't breathe. Um, what else? Laying down, laying on my left side when I'm sleeping. It's like I feel like I'm getting out of breath, like I'm exercising and I'm not. I'm just laying in bed. So that's, I, I knew, you know, that was a sign that, you know, geez, maybe this is, is getting worse. So that's another reason I went back. Um, any other signs of getting out of breath? Um, oh, I have, I have Raynaud's, which is the, a poor circulation thing, um, which I didn't connect to this, but my cardiologist said that's, that's what it's from. And Raynaud's syndrome, real quick, is... Um, I don't have good circulation to my my fingers and my arms and my legs. So also when I'm going up the stairs, my legs would get numb. Or when I would kneel, like my legs, my feet would go numb. And first they thought, oh, maybe you have multiple sclerosis because my mom has multiple sclerosis. So that's always, you know, oh, you know, it's not hereditary. But when they hear those words, they're like, oh, maybe that's what you have. Um, so I had a neurologist evaluate me for that, and no, I don't. Um, so this is a, a pure circulation issue with the Raynaud's, and 
what happened is my fingers go numb and they turn yellow, yellowish white at the tips, like you're going to have frostbite or something. And when I like rub them and get the circulation back, it's fine. It's a temporary thing. So, so that's another symptom I have. Um, so with it getting worse, Oh, oh, and I'm sorry, I, I'm skipping things. I, I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. Maybe I should have made an outline, but I'm not an organized person when it, when it comes to stuff like this. So let's see, we talked about my pulmonary blood pressure being higher. So now I also have a tricuspid valve leak with mild regurgitation where I didn't have before. Um, I also have, let's see, says my... Rhythm is a normal sinus rhythm. My left ventricle dimensions, which is this ventricle, is normal. Some people with this, it ends up, the dimensions of this, um, because of the mitral regurgitation and the work that the heart is doing, that ventricle enlarges and the walls get thicker or weaker um, so I'm not at that stage yet. My second echocardiogram in May of 16 showed that that left ventricle is still normal dimensions. Um, but what's happening is my mitral valve regurgitation is worse. It's a three to four, which is moderate to severe. And, oh, the, the mitral valve walls are thickening. So I don't know if that's because they're working harder and it's making them thicker or maybe and I'm not a doctor I'm, I'm just thinking theoretically that maybe um, the valve is trying to compensate to to, to thicken and, and shut it more I don't know so um, so with these things going on and the echo showing this 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 uh, getting worse element. <laughs> um, now my cardiologist wants to plan surgery. He would like to do it now because now is the prime time before the left ventricle gets worse um, or before the the pulmonary arteries, I guess, um, or veins, pulmonary veins, that's different, where the, the blood is regurgitating back. So I guess um, these veins, <laughs> it's backwards because the mirror, so, so these veins Sometimes with enough regurgitation, those veins are compromised and they'll start to get weak. So since they aren't weak yet, this is like the prime time to do surgery. I don't want to have surgery yet because I'm a wedding photographer and my last wedding is November 12th. So we want to put surgery off. So what my doctor said is we'll put you on two more prescriptions and what those are are, and I'm sure I'm going to say these wrong, furosemide, 20 milligrams, and that's a water pill. Um, and what that should do is reduce the water and bloating I'm getting because of this issue that could be making me feel like I can't, you know, that's hindering my, my breathing, the water buildup around my lungs and my heart and everything, I guess. And then he also put me on lisinopril, uh, 2.5 milligrams, and I take that twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. So what he was hoping these drugs would do is um, slow down my heart rate because my heart's starting to overwork again, um, cut down the regurgitation rate, and make me so I'm not at a shortness of breath. Like try to get rid of the shortness of breath. Um, try to calm these symptoms down and what's causing them so I can put off surgery. So he put me on these drugs and what he also wanted to schedule at this time was a, a, a trans echocardiogram. And what that is, is it's an echocardiogram, but instead of the ultrasound outside on my chest, they actually put it down my esophagus because they'll be closer to the heart. They get a better picture. So on these medications, um, they did a trans echocardiogram and they, um, they put me to sleep for that. I, I don't recall if it was conscious sedation or they actually put me to sleep, 
but they, they put a tube in your throat and then they put the um, ultrasound wand down your esophagus. And what that showed was that my left ventricle had normal thickness and the cavity size was normal. Um, and because of the medications I was on, now it was slowing down my regurgitation um, and it was putting my regurgitation back to a, a moderate phase. My heart wasn't going as fast. Um, and I, I have a blood pressure cuff, so I check my blood pressure. Um, and I also have an app. Let me see what the name of the app is. Um, and I monitor my blood pressure and my pulse. And the app is called BP Monitor. And I'm going to show a picture of the app. That's what it looks like. It's just a, a heart with a blue background, BP monitor. Um, trying to make it in focus. Can't really make it in focus, but it's called BP monitor. The heart has a plus on it. It's a free app. And what it does is you can chart your blood pressure and your pulse and what medications you're on. And then it records it and puts together a chart of, of where you're at. With, with those symptoms. So on these medications, my pulse is now only like between 55 and 60. My blood pressure is the top number. It's like anywhere from 80 to 90 over 50 to 60, which is very low. Um, and yeah, I, I, it's, it's low and I'll have symptoms of dizziness. I'll stand up too quick and everything goes white. Um, but I need to have my blood pressure this low so my heart doesn't get worse. So, um, with my blood pressure this low and my pulse this slow, uh, my doctor wants me to continue to exercise. So now when I run, I have no shortness of breath whatsoever. I feel like I'm completely like 19 years old. Like I'm not having any breathing issues, anything. I can go up the stairs and I can go all the way up the stairs. Where the third step, I my limbs were going numb. I was getting short of breath. And now I can just go up the stairs and I'm not having any issues at all. And so I, I went back uh, two weeks later to follow up with my surgeon, or my, my cardiologist, not the surgeon. And he's like, how are you feeling? Are, are the drugs working? And I said, yeah, I, I feel like nothing's wrong with me. I can run and I'm not getting out of breath at all. And he said, okay. He said, so let's, he said, I, I think you're going to be good to put off the surgery until November like you want. But if anything changes and we got to do surgery, we got to do surgery. So right now where I'm at is I'm on these meds and he's putting off surgery uh, till hopefully November. Um, so I'm going to make another uh, next video talking about how it's affecting my work um, and my fears of surgery and what I'm going through. All right, thanks.